Hello, this is Calculus 1, Lecture 7a, Logarithmic Differentiation. Uh, my name is Scott Grizzard from the University of South Florida. So last time we talked about implicit differentiation, and logarithmic differentiation is a special type of implicit differentiation. So uh, let's go ahead and look at what we did last time. Um, we had this method where we would change f of x to y. We'd create a y, and then we would perform some algebraic manipulation. Um, so, for example, when we wanted to prove the power rule worked for rational powers, we set y equal to p o x to the uh, p over q, and then we took the qth power of both sides so that we could differentiate nicely. Okay, so we're going to be doing something very similar today, except what we're going to be doing is using the properties of logarithms to do the algebraic manipulation. So it's a special type of implicit differentiation. So we need to remember a couple. So what we're going to do, we're going to talk about this algebra trick. And our motivating problem is the derivative of x over x to the x. Then we're going to be able to use this to prove the exponent rule, the power rule for x greater than zero, and do some cheap log proofs. Um, and then next time, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about related rates. So let's look at this kind of motivating example here, which is f of x equal x to the x. Now. For our sake, we're only going to define it on the interval zero infinity, okay? Now, you can define it at zero. Some people say it's one, and that's actually a, a not a bad thing uh, for a lot of purposes, for combinatorics and stuff like that. And then, as you can see, the limit goes to one. So this isn't the worst kind of idea to define it there. Um, we're not going to because the the indeterminate form zero to the zero is is is, is indeterminate it's undefined um, and so we're going to just kind of leave it like this to avoid confusion later on when we use L'Hopital's rule um, as I said you can define it at one when you define it less than zero it gets a little messy um, because of the square root uh, and then you've got even and then you you know the square roots and then you've got um, so you've got places where it's not defined you've got places where it's flipping up right where you've got like two-thirds powers where it's above the axis but one-third powers where it's below and it's it's very messy so we're only going to find it for x greater than zero and what we want to do is we want to take the derivative with respect to x of x to the x well I can't use the power rule. Remember that the power rule only let, remember the power rule is like x to the c. I, I have to have a constant exponent. And here I don't, the exponent's moving. But I can't use the exponent rule because I've also got the base moving. Um, so what we're going to do is we're gonna let y equal this. And what we're going to do is take the log of both sides. And that will let us recall from our algebra that if I take the log of a to the b, right, that becomes b times the log of a. So I can get rid of the, I can pull the exponent down. And this is not calculus. This is just algebra that will enable the calculus. Okay. So let's look at how we'll do this. So I've let y equal x to the x. And now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Notice I've done no calculus yet. All I've got, I've gotten rid of my problem by simply taking the log. Now what I'll do is I'll differentiate both sides with respect to x. Now on the left, I'm going to have a chain rule. This is an x, this is a y. So I'm going to need to chain the left. On the right, I now have a product rule. Okay, so all I did here was the chain, here, I did the product rule. Now, I'm going to evaluate these derivatives. Now, I have this here. I'm going to do a little simplifying. Before Now, I created this y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the y to the other side. And I'm going to solve for dy over dx. But I'm going to simplify a little on this side too, right? I'm going to get rid of the 1. And I'm going to let those x cancels and become just a 1 there. Okay, and now... I created y, so I have to eliminate the y. So y was x to the x. So now I just sub in x to the x. And that's it. Now I have an expression for the derivative y with respect to x, x to the x times ln of x plus 1. And that's my derivative. And as you can see, this derivative has some interesting things. We might want to solve it for 0. Um, 
there's going to be some interesting things going on with this function here. It's going to here, right here, it's going to have an interesting point. It's going to have a flat tangent line. And as you can see, what's going to happen with the tangent lines is like that. Now, just let me give you a little warning here. There is a general power rule out there floating around on the internet, um, which gives you like the derivative with respect to x of f of x to the g of x. Ignore it. Don't use it. If you wind up using it, you're going to lose a lot of points on the test because we want you to actually be able to do the logarithmic differentiation. You can prove this using logarithmic differentiation, but it, 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 don't do it. Just l give it, leave it like this, okay? So that's our first example, uh, y equals x to the x. And if we want to graph this example, we can swing right on over to Desmos and do it. So here is f of x. Okay, so now we have our little, I did the, everything. Here's my linearization formula for f at a. Um, and here's the, the slope right here as I go along. Um, as we can see, it's 1 when uh, x is 1. And we can, you know, do a little things. Let's solve for this one. Where does it equal 0? Let's just go ahead and figure that out. So here I've got, I need to find this place. Where is the log uh, equal to uh, negative 1? Okay. So if we look at the log function, so when x equals 1 over e, I'm going to have the derivative with respect to x equal to zero. And that's kind of an interesting thing. Why on earth, x to the x, why on earth would one over e be its minimum there? And it's kind of an interesting thought. So I'll leave you with that thought. Um, and let's look at another example. So for another example, and this one also has a really cool looking graph. So sort of the same idea for this graph. It starts here. I'm not going to define it at zero, but this thing does interesting things, right? It goes bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. And it, it, it's got some interesting, interesting uh, picture to it. Um, and it's got, you know, maximums here, maximum here. And notice as it moves to the right, these things get n more narrow um, and higher. And it, so it's got kind of an interesting thought to it. Uh, so let's look at how we do this. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. Okay, so there's our answer. That's our solution. Right there. I'm, I can make some little descriptions here. I don't really need to, but... Um, so, and I sub back in for y here. Remember, I created y, so I take it away. And I did basically the same thing. I set, I set something equal to y, set f of x equal to y. I took the log of both sides. So notice how much of this is just algebra. Then I do some calculus, and then I'm back to doing algebra again. Um, so again, that's another way to do this. So let's look at the graph of this thing. So as you can see here, I, I go off, oops. So as I start near zero, we can see here, I'm gonna have a, a, a flat horizontal tangent here, and then another one here, and then another one here somewhere. And this has a lot of interesting uh, properties. You can see my tangent line moving uh, right and left. Um, you can see here, it's got areas where the tangent line is really steep. And you can also see what goes on here um, it's very interesting. I'm, I, I kind of have these little cycles going on all, all over the place. And it's kind of a neat little graph. Um, so that's that one. Now, of course, we've played with this. Um, it's got some nice little fun properties. Uh, but let's look at what's the real power of doing this. And the real power of doing this is proving the... Um, is doing... is proving the power rule for x greater than zero for any real exponent. So we already did, um, uh, we used the binomial theorem to do it for positive powers. 
um, X is anywhere. Then we did it for negative powers where as long as it was defined, but I could still use negative X's. Um, and then if I had rational powers, I could now do it for, um, uh, I could now take the der derivative of uh, using related, I'm sorry, using uh, implicit differentiation. Last time we got our rational powers. Now here we're going to use logarithmic differentiations to get real powers, but with positive X. So these are functions like, um, uh, x to the pi. Can, can we take the derivative of x to the pi? So, and it turns out we can. Now, note again, the way these real things are defined, you don't actually usually get powers for things less than zero. Um, and depending on which one it is, they'll usually be defined at zero, but you won't get derivatives there. Um, so, as I said, this would be something like x to the pi. Um, Okay, and what we want to do is we want to prove that we can take the derivative of this and that the power rule still works. So we're going to do what we, so we've got x to the c, where c is some real constant, like pi. Um, and what we're going to say is if x is greater than zero, then f prime of x equals c times x to the c minus one. Okay. So our strategy is going to let y equal x to the c. I'm going to take the log of both sides and then implicate implicitly differentiate on the right side i'm going to wind up with an x to the minus one on the left side i'm still going to wind up with that same old uh one over y dy over dx and then i move the y over to the other side so let's look at this let's just do the proof Now, notice here, I have a constant out front. I don't actually need the product rule for this. This right here is a constant multiple. So I can just use the constant multiple rule to pull that out. This side right here is going to be our usual chain. So on the left side, we're going to have d over dy. And remember, I said in my intro that I was just going to leave this side as x to the minus 1. And so now I sub back in for y, and then I'm going to add the exponents, and I wind up with what I want. And that's it. I now have proved the product rule. That's, yeah, I have now proved, let me put the period down here. I have now pulled, proved the product rule for, I'm sorry, the, the power rule for real exponents. And it was just kind of this little slick piece of voodoo, right? I took the, by taking the log of both sides, and it is voodoo. This is definitely voodoo. Um, I took the log of both sides, and I, I just get the C out front, and then I take the derivative of both, and I multiply the Y back over to the other side. This is definitely voodoo. Uh, let's see some more voodoo. We'll do a little QED here. Let's do another piece of voodoo. This is the exponential rule. If c is a constant, then the derivative with respect to x of c to the x equals the log of c times c to the x. And c has to be greater than 0. Well, I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing I, thing I did before. Um, I'm just going to do a little voodoo. So, Now, again, I don't need a product rule here because ln of c is just a constant. So I just do the constant multiple rule. And the derivative of x with respect to itself is simply 1. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply y over to both sides and then sub back in for y. And now I've proved it. Okay, now there are these kind of, that's another one of these voodoo proofs. Um, now, there are voodoo proofs uh, for the product and quotient rule, but they only work, I call them half credit proofs, right? You do half the number line, right? They only work if u and v are positive, okay? So, as I say, you do half the number line, you get half the credit. Um, okay, so let's look at them. Uh, they're really good if you need to remember them. So, if I let y equal to uv... And then I take the log of this. Well, remember that the log of u times v is the same thing as the log of u plus the log of v. So now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. I'm going to get that y to the negative 1 dy over dx, right? The 1 over y dy over dx. I'm, I'm just not going to write out the whole chain rule. 
again. And then I'm going to have a u to the negative 1. The inside here, the derivative of the inside from the chain rule, du over dx, plus a v to the negative 1 dv over dx. Okay, so I multiply y over by the other side, and I have uv times this thing. Well, I'm going to get the u is going to cancel when it multiplies in, and I'm going to get a v here, and the v cancels when I multiply in, and I get a u here. So I wind up with a cheap proof. But remember, this proof only works if u and v are both greater than zero. So if you write this on the test, you're going to get half the number line, you get half the credit. Quotient rule, same thing. I'm going to let, this is going to be a subtraction instead, which really helps you remember, hey, I did negative ln of v, and then I'm going to get the dv over dx with the v negative 1 and the u negative 1 here with the minus sign instead. I'm going to multiply the u over v. I've got the y negative 1 over here. I multiply over, and I get the u over dx times v to the negative 1 minus v to the negative 2, u dv over dx. I take a common denominator again, and I wind up with the quotient rule. Um, as I said, those are the cheap LN proofs that will only get you half credit. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, we did, um, just to review what we did, we went over uh, two examples, uh, the derivative of x to the x. We did, you know, I showed the algebra trick. Uh, what we do is we let y equal to f of x. We take the log of both sides, and then we implicit differentiate. Uh, we use some algebra, and then we implicitly differentiate. Uh, then we just solve for dy over dx um, and sub back in for y. Um, so that was all there was to it. Um, and then we used it to prove the exponent rule, the power rule, and then we did cheap log proofs for uh, product and quotient, not power and quotient. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much.